Hello YouTubers! If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're interested in understanding EMV. So welcome! My name is Hervé, I've been working in the card payment industry for 10 years, being involved on a lot of very technically oriented projects. So I'm going to go as far as to consider myself as an expert in EMV. Now, I've created education programs in the past, but I'm very excited to present to you the overview for a course I created especially for Paytech Academy. I would argue that this one is far superior to everything I've produced so far in terms of depth and of educational process. So please watch it. And if you like what you see, come visit us on Paytech Academy. You can start with a free trial of the course. And in this video, we'll give you a coupon for a 5% discount if you want to register for the full course. Why was this course created, you might ask? I want to start by saying that EMV isn't really complicated. It's just difficult to approach. Specifications are a dry read, information is all over the place, and experts are too busy. In effect, the barrier to entry is higher than it should be, and this course was created to overcome that. I've been working with EMV for 10 years, struggling for the first year until it started to make sense. Once you get to know it, once you know where everything is, you can see that it is very coherent and why it allows terminals all around the world to accept payments from cards from everywhere. EMV is a real marvel of interoperability. Again, why was this course created? So that the next generation of EMV specialists do not need to waste time and energy getting their bearings. This course is based on my experience of taking many people for this path over the years. What I'm looking for when students leave the course is that they have a good understanding of the big picture and who all the various players are. The big picture is important because most of the complexity of EMV comes from the fact that entities that do not trust one another have to interact. It's also important, if you're testing equipment for instance, to know where you sit on the picture so that you understand what to expect from other players and what the other players expect from you. Students will also know where to find information. As we said, the specifications are a bit dry and because there are many players, it can be difficult to know where to look for the information that you need. A very important goal is to understand how all the pieces fit together, from the big picture all the way down to the deep technical bits. This is the most effective path to be able to perform good analysis. Students will also understand how to navigate for EMV transactions. It can be quite daunting when you first look at a trace, but we'll go at it bit by bit as we build up the knowledge. And finally, the ultimate goal of this course is for students to be able to troubleshoot failing transactions, to be able to identify that the transaction indeed failed, and to find out the reasons why. This course effectively bridges the gap between basic IT knowledge and EMV efficiency. The course contains six and a half hours of bite-sized videos split into relevant chapters and exercises that should take between three and five hours altogether. You can think of it as a two-day course with a highly experienced instructor, but more convenient because you can work at your own speed and on your own schedule. This is a technical course, and the path is one of increasing complexity. We build knowledge blocks for the chapters, and we rely on them to continue down the learning path. The blocks are as follows. We start with the big picture. This is non-technical, high-level information. It is followed by some technical fundamentals. This is to ensure that students have a solid IT base for EMV. Based on those two blocks, we look at how a chip card works. And we look at how a payment terminal works. It's important to understand how they interact. Then we take a deep dive into the cryptography that is relevant to EMV. We're not trying to make you a cryptography expert, 
but it's important to understand the problems that EMV is looking to solve, what solutions were chosen, and their impact on payment transactions. Then we'll start going into the transaction themselves, starting with the high-level transaction flow, see how things fit together, and getting to the technical understanding of how this also important part of EMV works, tax. We'll then bring those two concepts together to see what goes where and the impacts that one can have on the other. Then we'll see in details all the APDUs, the EMV commands. This is where the rubber hits the road, where all the knowledge you will have accumulated is turned into a communication between two devices. Finally, in the wrap-up session, I'll share with you diagrams for transaction analysis, which are based on my 10 years experience doing this kind of work, and we'll go through detailed analysis of several EMV transactions to see which ones were successful, which ones failed, and why they failed. Who was this course built for? Quite simply, for everyone who needs strong EMV technical knowledge to be effective and efficient in their work. Roles that come to mind include the following areas. Payment terminal EMV certification, payment terminal integration, Payment Terminal Development and Quality Assurance, or Testing. Troubleshooting Transaction Failures for Banks or Acquirers. And the flip side of the picture, with Chip Card Issuance, Chip Card Development or Quality Assurance. And obviously consultants in any of those areas. But I know that there are many more areas where people need strong EMB technical knowledge to be effective and efficient in their work. You can stay tuned for course samples, or if you want to get a feel for what it's like to go through the course, you can sign up for a free trial on paytechacademy.com. And don't forget to make a note of the coupon code for your 5% discount. In any case, if you think that this course is a good fit for you, I hope you'll enjoy taking it as much as I enjoyed building it. In the personalization phase, the card issuer injects a series of keys into the memory. It also injects an offline PIN code, which is usually the same value as the online PIN code. The issuer also injects application data, issuer data, and cardholder data into the card's internal memory. And finally, the issuer adds all the files and records that terminals around the world will need to read. Typically, when data injection is complete, the issuer blows a software fuse on the chip card, which moves the card into its life stage and makes it impossible to go backwards. Hence, an application cannot be personalized twice. But, as we hinted, there are ways for the issuer to make minor changes post-issuance. If we look at a payment application when a card is live, what we marked as external data is terminal readable. Anything above the dotted line, that is the keys, the pin code, and the internal data, are for internal processing only. So that means that a card will use information either to update its internal status or to produce information that will be given to the terminal. But the actual internal data will stay hidden. What cryptography brings to the picture is that there is a secure channel that is being opened between the card and the issuer. When a transaction happens, transaction data is being generated. This includes card number, amount, date, and so on. At that stage, the card uses the AC key, the application cryptogram key, to sign the data so that when the issuer receives the transaction for authorization, it can retrieve the same AC key, which uniquely belongs to a card, and be sure of the identity of the chip card, as well as the integrity of the transaction data, which means that the risk of fraud is greatly minimized. Quite simply, C01 is for the first card decision. 
and C level 2 is for the second card decision. The above are a list of data objects, tags and lengths, to be passed to the chip card when requesting the first or the second decision. Here's an example of a C level 1. As usual when a tag is a data object list, its value is a series of tags and lengths. So with this example, the card expects to receive values for the following tags 9F02, 9F03, 9F1A, 95, 5F2A, 9A, 9C, and 9F37. And those values are expected during the first general AC command, which is when the terminal asks for the first card decision. And the terminal now knows how many bytes to send with each value. We can see that there's an external authenticate command. That very indeed was an ARPC that was sent by the issuer to the terminal to be presented to the card. And finally, that the status word is 9000, which means that the card accepted the ARPC. So what we have here is a full online transaction. It was approved by the card on the second round AC. The response code from the issuer is 00. And there was a response cryptogram that was accepted by the card.